discussed with Washington and San Francisco. Herm Edwards here with us. How are you? I'm wonderful. You can speak to this position just a little bit. I just want to point out, so Norman had in 53 games seven interceptions. In 20 games, you had 13. Yes. Yeah. That, that, that those numbers are correct. Yeah, so you are all right. You know what? You, you, your career parallels Josh Norman's a little bit, both unheralded coming out of college, obviously. Now, you were just completely undrafted, had to walk on how many free agents were out there when yeah. you showed up. 22 defensive backs. Yeah. 22 keep defensive seven. backs. And you not only made the team, you made the starting lineup your first year. Yes. And wherever only the football was, to start that the guy was. Football I know. The only year. rookie to start. That's pretty good. So. He's qualified. Oh, I think yeah. so. More than qualified. What is the best fit for, for Well, Norman? I think when you think of the system he's come out of, it, it was 28% pressure. So think about that. 28% of the time they brought pressure. They brought four, they brought five or more guys. Mm -hmm. um, Washington brings pressure about 21% of the time. So this would be a good fit. Joe Barry is the coach there. Uh, they have Breland. Uh, Josh Norman is a, is, is a corner that plays great with his eyes. He has wonderful instincts. Um, Sometimes he gets caught out of position. Uh, we saw that happen to him uh, against the Giants with Beckham. Uh, at times he lets his guard down because he's a little bit of what I call a rat trap player. Plays a lot with his eyes. You can double move him. He wants to look at the quarterback, and this is where he makes breaks on the ball. Uh, I think that's the system that he can flourish in. Uh, we've seen this happen before the corners in the league. One that we can think about right now was Maxwell, Byron Maxwell, mm -hmm. Brandon Browner. Uh, they left that Seattle that comfort of that Seattle football team. They had a nice front, and they played a lot of zone behind it, some man-to-man. -man. They went to other teams and got exposed, played too much man-to-man, -to -man, put too much burden on them. So I just think that has a lot to do with it. I hope he gets whatever he wants. Uh, I, I always pull for players to get whatever they can get. This guy was a fifth-round pick. But I understand why Carolina moved on, because basically what they're really? saying. And, and yeah, yeah, I do, because Gettleman. Gettleman is saying he, he's an old giant. Uh, guy mm -hmm. come out of that philosophy. They're not going to pay a corner that amount of money. They draft him in the fifth round. There are corners coming out this year that have a lot of his traits that they feel they can put in their system and will play well. They're going to pay their big guys. They're going to play, uh, well, you know, mm -hmm. that, 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 I'm just saying that, that yeah. that's what they're going to do. They're, you they're, can sit and argue all you want, Skip, and, yeah. and, and, and yes. you know, and Stephen yeah. A., you can argue me all you want. I just know what they're thinking about. They're not going to pay a corner they're, 16. They're but that's not what I'm challenging, rushes. Coach. Yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm, not okay. challenging what, I'm not challenging what you're saying mm -hmm. in regards to what they're thinking about. I know you know that. What I'm saying is that you're saying you don't have a problem with it. Here's my question. Yes. Do you not have a problem with them pulling an offer off the table? And, and if you say that you don't want to pay him X right. amount of dollars over the long term, that's fine. But you could have said, here's the one year, $13 million franchise tag offer. Take it or leave it. You could have done that. Right. As opposed to rescinding the offer and saying, well, just go out there and do what you have to do, you know, when... He wasn't unaware of it because, I, listen, there are times and there have been times in the past. I've gotten several calls over the last 24 hours where guys were unaware of what their representation was going into a room and doing with the team. And I'm saying to mm -hmm. you, there are times when executives pick and cherry pick and choose who they want to talk to, what kind of conversations that they want to have, et cetera. I have no problem with David Gettleman saying we're not going to do this long term because these are the dollars we're not going to pay you. What I do have a problem with is you saying, I'm going to just pull the one-year offer off the table when you've had it on there presumably for weeks. That, to me, is a problem, and I'm wondering why you don't have a problem with that. Well, I, I didn't think we were... T I, 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 I didn't understand that was the question. Okay. 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 So uh, let me correct myself. I, I will say this. Um, I can see... As you negotiate, now this is why Norman has a new agent, because he probably was not in the loop and not aware of what was going on. Yep. And good for right. Norman, because he needs to be aware. It's his career, not the agent's career. And if the agent wasn't actually telling Norman what was going on, shame on him. Uh, and, and now you put the player in, in a bad way because, you know, the organization's not going to talk to the player. They're not going to do that. They're not going to get involved with the player. So all of a sudden now the organization is saying, well, Look, the agent is, is representing Norman. Does Norman not know this? They don't know Norman might not know all the information. So there's a miscommunication somewhere. So they just felt, I think this too, Stephen A., they felt in their mind, right, wrong, or indifferent, if we give this guy a one-year deal, how is he going to be in the locker room? 
or we're going to have to deal with this for the whole season. And rather for that to be a distraction, and yeah. maybe it is, maybe it's not. I don't know. I, you know, I, I'm not there, but I think that might have been the thinking. And if so, we say, well, let's get rid of him now before the draft so teams can actually look and go, okay, we would prefer this guy before we draft a guy. And a lot of teams are going to come after him. There's no doubt about that. Mm. Are you good, Stephen A.? You want me to go? Well, well, yeah, yeah right. the, only thing that I, the only thing that I want to say is that everybody's talking about the Redskins. I think the Steelers would be an ideal fit for him. Last time I saw the Steelers against Denver in the postseason, <laughs> who did they have in their secondary? William Gay, Brandon Boykin, Antoine Blake, Will Allen, my, you, know, my, you know, Mike Mitchell. I, I would like to see Josh Norman in a, in a spot like that with a coach like Mike Tomlin. <laughs> I would love that. That would be great, but they won't pay him that money. That's, That's the true. problem. Yeah. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know where I think the best fit for Josh Norman would be? Uh-oh. Carolina. Because I believe his heart is in Charlotte. No and doubt. I believe if he signs elsewhere for much more money than they were willing to pay him, I think at some point next year, that team is going to say, man, he left his heart in Charlotte. You know, he's not really into what we're doing here. Because I think his heart was really in Carolina. Obviously, he's a good for, fit for them. You know, their oh. defense. He was the emotional leader of that defense. Yeah. No doubt. And if Stephen A is correct, and I, I certainly trust all your reporting on this, Stephen A. You know, he, he, he was playing a game that, that he didn't really understand the rules of. He was playing chicken with the franchise that was playing hardball. And he thought it was softball. He thought it was just this sort of game within the game. Even when we were here, he was talking about, hey, it's not personal, it's just business, you know? Right. Well, yeah, it's cold-blooded business. And you're right. They got to a point where they said, hey... We don't want this hanging over our locker room all year, and we're, we're not even close. They were $5 million off. So I, I tell Josh Norman today with his new agent that's part of his team, if, if he really wants to, there's no law. You can't go back to Gettleman right now and say, hey, I'll play for $10 million a year for the next five years, not 15. I don't want the top money. I'll, I'll go back to what you were offering me. I'll take $10 million a year. It's a lot of money. You know, again, it's not 15. You're not going to be the highest paid cornerback over the next five years, but but why not? W would he do that, Stephen A? Because I think they would take him back for ten million a year. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what he'll do monetarily. All I'm all I'm prepared to say, uh, without any doubt, is that Carolina is where he wants to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He wants to play for the Carolina sure. Panthers. Okay. He wants to be there, and his whole mentality is coming out of Coastal Carolina playing on a practice squad, working his way and ascending to this level, and then being within 60 minutes of a Super Bowl title. He's, he, you know, his whole mentality is that my heart is not just there, but also we've got a job to finish. And so it would be interesting that Cam Newtons and others of the world, yep. considering what they're after, it's going to be real interesting to see who speaks up for him, specifically when what I'm being told, Coach mm -hmm. and Skip, is that he was not aware of some of the yeah. specific actions yeah. that the okay. agent was engaging in on his behalf. Yeah, that's not fair. Or, or, or maybe, to, to be fair about this, maybe he just didn't understand what the game was that they were playing, that it's, that, that it's, it's sort of a do-or-die scenario professionally, what you're doing. Stephen A., just a quick story. When I was a cub reporter in Los Angeles, there was a great older columnist at the uh, Herald Examiner named Mel Durslag. You won't remember him. You won't remember him. But he was a great writer and a wise man. And he told me, I, was, I must have been 24 years old, he said, if you're ever negotiating with your employer and you threaten to leave, you better be ready to leave. Don't ever threaten unless you're ready to walk out that door. And Josh didn't understand. He threatened. And they said, goodbye. Right? Well, well you, you, yeah, sort of, but you have to remember that the Carolina Panthers were the ones that supposedly granted him and his agent permission to look at other teams. So if you're mm. Josh Gordon, I'm sorry, Josh Norman, and you've been, you, you know, you, you're somewhat of a novice at this. This is a guy that accumulated no more than $3 million over the course of his four-year career thus far. This was his moment, his payday. Yes. You know you're surrounded with grown men inside that locker room. Correct me if I'm wrong, Coach, where they're telling you, this is you got to Yo, strike no while the iron's hot. Try to get paid. Yes. So you're, since they're talking business, you're talking business, and you're thinking 
This is a part of the process. And you're thinking that at the end of the day, they're going to come to you with a take it or leave it offer. Never in your wildest dreams did you imagine that you're an all pro, that you just helped lead this defense and got and help guide them to a Super Bowl appearance for the first time since 2003. You don't anticipate that they're going to literally yank the offer off the table. You think they're going to give you a take it or leave it proposition, but that's your worst case scenario as opposed to assuming they're going to take the offer off the table and sweep the rug right out from under you in that fashion. Hey, I, I, I sincerely doubt he saw that coming. And, and I don't know if that's right on the part of David Gettleman. If you're talking about family, you're talking about team chemistry and camaraderie and building from within with guys that want to be together. I don't know, if, because if that was the problem, why put the one year off on the table to begin with? You, you make why the, do that? You, you're spot on, Stephen A. I do know this. This is his biggest contract, wherever it may, wherever it may land. Your, your second contract in the National Football League is basically your biggest one. Most guys never get that mm -hmm. third one. Mm -hmm. it, it's always you know, decelerating True. or it's going to be yep. option clause and all that other stuff. But this is his biggest deal, so he has to get what he feels he deserves. Yep. And all we know right now is that they're talking with San Francisco and Washington. Yep. All right. Herm, you will be back with us later. Talk a little basketball. We're we talking about basketball, no? We're we talking about football some more. We, we got a lot of stuff. Oh. Football. Uh, We're well, going to be talking uh, about Bradford, I, 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 I will think. agree with Stephen A. I, I was fortunate enough to watch Charles Barkley play. Yeah. And um, he's a really good player. I mean, yeah. he's top 50, no, no question. No question. We, we don't have and time. I'm not saying that because he's a personal See, friend. Just throwing and just then we got to go to break. I'm just telling you. Oh, you're protected now. Mark was pretty good. Shrewd move. Shrewd move. No, he's pretty good, good now. Stephen yeah. A was spot on on that yeah. one. Yeah. Leave Charles Barkley alone. He's pretty good now. Herm, appreciate That's you. Right. We'll talk to you in a little bit. Yeah. It's widely considered the greatest Super Bowl halftime show ever. We will remember Prince after the break.